Pwede ba lumapit? Assalamu alaikum. Waalaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. May peace peace and many blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. First of all, uh sorry, di ako makakapagtagalog ng straight, so baka man knows me kayo lang hat and I'm so sorry for that. But inshallah, this is all uh, for the sake of Allah. And inshallah, may matututunan po kayo. Um, Jazakallah khair for our sister Fatima Bai for inviting me. And it is such a great pleasure to be here. And um, sana may Allah purify my intentions and guide me throughout this talk. And um, this talk is not only a reminder for you, but also, para sa akin, inshallah. Uh, Alhamdulillah, lahat po tayo ay Muslim. And uh, bilang isang Muslim, we have testified shahada. And this means, when a person has testified shahada, it means that we have surrendered to the will of Allah. It means we must sacrifice our nafs, our desires, our cravings, and obey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. According to the sunnah of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is why, sinabini Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam na, this dunya, which means world, is like a prison for the believers, and a heaven for the disbelievers. So, brothers and sisters, we hear a lot about ibadah and good deeds. But today, I would like to emphasize on the importance of akhlaq. I have been trying to practice Islam for nearly three years now. And marami po akong nakilalang mga Muslim, mga iba't ibang klaseng Muslim. I have met some Muslims who are well educated with the deen, but are very harsh and arrogant towards people like me, who are still trying to learn. And this, unfortunately, is one of the many problems in the Muslim communities today. Islam is like a building. Its pillars is salah, and its roof is akhlaq. Unfortunately, we are too busy building our pillars for our deen that we have forgotten to build our roof, which is akhlaq. Akhlaq is a solution to this problem. The word akhlaq is the plural, plural word for which means a person's character, behavior, nature, and disposition. According to Abida binti Abdul Rahim in her book, Understanding Islamic Ethics and its Significance on the Character Building, the word akhlaq has a close relationship to the word khaliq, which means the creator, and makhluk, which means the creature, as humans. Therefore, akhlaq is the good relationship between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and between us humans. Khuluq, which is another word for akhlaq, which means good character, is referred to the state of the soul that determines human actions, not the soul or the action. This kind of character can be achieved through training and practice. You know, sometimes when you're in a situation that is really challenging, your patience, when you're with people around you that sinaktan ka or binakbite ka and, and all maraming galit na nag build up sa puso mo and you want to be angry and it's so difficult to hold your, your tongue and from my experience, actually this has happened to me many times and I'm like, hey, paano ko gagawin to? Paano ko, paano ko magiging patient? and hold my tongue. And then, binabalikan ko yung meaning ng akhlaq. I contemplate on how it is connected with our relationship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these questions come up in my head. If I say something bad about this person, will Allah be pleased with me? And 
then it becomes easier to practice patience. And these challenges are actually a training ground to push you to, to, push you to polish your akhlaq. These situations are actually a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you a better person. May Allah make it easy for us to understand this. The best example and role, role model that we can ever look up to when it comes to akhlaq is the akhlaq of our beloved Prophet Muhammad. We can learn so much from him and it makes so much sense that we are obliged to follow him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, and you, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are on the exalted standard of character. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the best role for everyone. He was the best husband, father, and grandfather, a great leader, judge, and statesman. He fought for justice, for love and dignity for everyone, not just Muslims, even non-Muslims. In Sahih Muslim, during the time of increasing persecution amongst the Muslims, the Sahaba told him وسلم, to curse the Quraysh, which are the persecutors. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, I have not been sent to lay a curse upon men, but to be a blessing to them. The Quraysh worsened their persecution, but the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, always, always prayed for them. Once the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was badly stoned to the point where he was bleeding all over his body while he was on his way to Ta'if to give da'wah. Instead of listening to him, his words of wisdom, they set the street urchins to chase after him till nightfall. Even when he was being attacked, he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh my Lord, guide my people along the truth path as they are ignorant of the truth. At this point, he saw Salim still had compassion towards the people, no matter what creed, caste, or color they were. And he told the Sahaba to regard everyone as their brothers and sisters. How many of us, including... How many of us, including myself, if someone hurt us and backbite about them, we slander them until we keep all this hatred in our hearts? You see some of our brothers and sisters on the social network who are not in the same level as you, who are not practicing, and you comment the most hurtful and critical things that is a form of mental torture. By the way, thousands of people can read this. You have embarrassed your brother and sister in Islam. A wise Muslim called Hamdun Al-Qasar has said, if a friend among your friends does something wrong, make 70 excuses for him. If your hearts aren't able to do this, then know that the shortcoming is in yourselves. SubhanAllah. And you think, when you are doing this to them, when you are saying these bad stuff about them, you think that they're going to go back to Islam? No. With this type of behavior, you think, oh, I'm wearing hijab, I'm growing my beard, I'm learning Quran, and you are going to Jannah? No. Wearing hijab, growing your beard, learning Quran, is not enough. The body cannot function without the soul, which is like deen and akhlaq. They go together. You must have these two to be successful with practicing Islam. A man once Rasulullah, well, a man once came to Rasulullah Sallallahu O Messenger of Allah, what is religion? The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu replied, good conduct. Then he came to his front and asked, O Messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, what? What is religion? The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu replied, Good conduct. Then Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, looking at him, not to be angry is good conduct. The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was asked, What is misfortune? The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu replied, Bad conduct. A man once said to Rasulullah Sallallahu Teach me some words that I can live by. Do not make them too much for me, lest I will forget. Rasulullah Sallallahu replied, Do not become angry. Once, a robber stole Omar ibn al-Khattab's anhu's turban in the marketplace and ran. Omar ran after him shouting, I bear witness to Allah that I have given it to you. So I say, I accept it, so that hellfire does not touch you. 
Subhanallah, controlling your tongue is also a big part of akhlaq. According to Mulana Tariq Jamil, controlling the tongue is actually a shortcut to Jannah. He explained that there are two roads. One road is traffic, full of people learning Quran. You know, basically, those who are trying to practice deen, and the other road is almost empty. These few people are the ones with akhlaq. Subhanallah. Imagine if you can hold your tongue, you could race towards Jannah because there is no traffic. Subhanallah. We must strive to perfect our akhlaq. The problem is that we forget to really contemplate on the mercy and compassion of Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to look upon the character of our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are worshipping Allah. Allah is the most merciful. We make mistakes again and again, and every time we repent, He keeps forgiving us, no matter how much we have sinned. Why can't we do this to our own brothers and sisters? Why cannot we try and embody the characteristics for others? There is this famous saying, how can we expect Allah to forgive us and be compassionate towards us if we are not forgiving to others? SubhanAllah. We are not worshipping Islam. You know, see, brother and sisters doing something un-Islamic, you start hating them and criticizing them and start saying, oh, haram that, haram this, astaghfirullah. Remember that famous saying, when you're pointing a finger at someone? Well, guess what? There are three fingers pointing back at you. Are you forgetting your own shortcomings? Don't you have shortcomings? Look at your own, and trust me, you won't have time pointing at others. Believe it or not, being harsh, harsh towards others about deen will not make them turn back to Islam. It will only make things worse. Trust me, I have been in that position where I was not practicing. I have heard pretty nasty things said about me. The comments that I have received only made me more rebellious. Yes, when I, was started, when I started to seek after the truth and wanted to know more about Islam, I went to a gathering called Darshani. And during this time, I was still in showbiz. I became so fascinated at how these sisters did not criticize me for the job I was doing. They welcomed me with open arms, despite my shortcomings in my religion. Aside from my fascination of the teachings of Islam and the character of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the treatment of the sisters pushed me into really practicing Islam. I thought to myself, if these are true Muslims. I see that they really implement the teachings of Islam and the character of Prophet Muhammad in their lives. We must follow the character of Rasulullah. We must not follow our own pride. You know sometimes on the road to practicing, there is a tendency a person can get prideful because you know, shaitan is in all of us. Shaitan can fool you to think that you are better than everybody else just because you are studying the Quran, you are wearing the hijab, and you are growing your beard. But you can fight that if you can keep checking your akhlaq. When you start to practice and you really get into it, don't lose yourself along the process with just deed. Remember akhlaq. You will only lock yourself inside a small box and you will only become arrogant and prideful. Don't forget akhlaq. Akhlaq broadens the mind and helps you think outside the box. It helps you to become humble and compassionate towards others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, If you take less from someone in this life, then I will give you more in paradise. If you ask someone to forgive you, then I will give you a higher rank than them in paradise. The more you make yourself humble amongst the creation, the more I will raise your rank in paradise. May Allah make this talk beneficial for all of us and forgive me if I have said something wrong. Ameen. And I was just talking to the sisters, uh, Kanina, and they were telling me that 